Hello everyone, I am The Dude. welcome back, and today I am glad to say that we are finally switching over to a winter weather discussion today. The tropics are finally starting to die down, although we do have a system to watch by Bermuda, where the chances have gone back up to 20%, these chances have been up and down at this point. If anything breaking does develop, I will update you guys on that, but finally tropical activity seems to be dying down, and we're going to be talking about the potential for some snowstorms, and maybe for those of you in the east that have lost hope for this winter, maybe... Uh, like an upcoming pattern, uh, upcoming pattern change that could benefit maybe some cold and maybe even some snow for the east. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. Alright, so before we get in, I want to talk about the oscillations because the oscillations are very important and we'll get into the modeling. So the oscillations can determine the jet stream patterns, who gets the colder, who gets the warm air, who gets the storms, and who does not. Well, this is an example of a positive PNA phase, all right? So I'm gonna show you what typically happens in a positive PNA because in the forecast, you will actually see that we could be heading to a positive PNA, which stands for a Pacific North American pattern. So as you can see, all the below average 500 millibar heights are all over the Eastern United States. Now this doesn't directly correspond to temperatures, although chances are when you see these blues and purples, this does tend to uh, correlate to colder temperatures, but this has to more so do with the jet stream and like, like, for example, this is like low pressure over here, and then this would be like higher pressure over here. All right? But you could definitely see the east definitely looks stormier and maybe even a bit colder as well, while we have the above average heights over the northwest and Canada. Well, all right, so obviously this would be beneficial for cold and snow in the east, right? Well, let's look at the latest PNA forecast, all right? So the black line is where we're at right now, basically. Between the black and where the red line starts, that's where we're at right now. Basically flat zero, but through the 1st of December... All the ensembles on the Climate Prediction Center forecast here projected to go upwards. And that's the thing though, we've actually, if you look at the past data, we've been at a positive PNA for a pretty long time, although it's not very significant. A couple times it's dropped down to zero, and then through October, November, it's fallen below, which is why I feel like it's been a little bit warmer here in the east. I feel like November's been a bit warmer. So I think that can that is kind of the reason why we've fallen below average on the PNA. Whereas if we head to a positive PNA, the east could start getting a bit colder, a bit snowier, and obviously, basically it would be inverse for the west, basically like the opposite. All right, and you can see up to seven to ten day, the fourteen day forecast. Um, of course, you can see the forecast there. So next, all right, we're gonna talk about all three oscillations that are significant. We're gonna talk. We just talked about the Pacific North American pattern. Next, I believe is the Arctic. Yeah, this is the Arctic oscillation, the AO. All right, now this is what happens when we are in a negative AO. Basically, a negative AO and a negative NAO, which is North American oscillation, are similar to what happens with a positive PNA. So basically, if you live in the east and you want cold and snow, you want a negative AO and NAO, and you want a positive PNA. So let's see what happens with a negative Arctic oscillation. So as you can see, big high pressure, and chances are a building ridge, okay, in that's building way up in the Arctic. So above average geopotential heights, a weak polar vortex. Now, that's the thing though. All the cold air, or at least the most significant below average geopotential heights, are all over the northern Atlantic in Europe. All right. Now, keep in mind that the United States, actually, there's really nothing, there's really nothing contrast between the east and the west. They're both pretty similar. So we, get, we have some slightly below average uh, geopotential heights. I wish you did like a, I wish there was like a surface temperature anomaly for this map. I'm sure there is, but this is what happens when you get a negative AO. And guess what? We're <laughs> that seems to be where we're headed. All right, we've been in it, and this is another reason why this could explain why November's been so warm over here, and maybe the opposite for the for the West. Look how far up the AO has been. All right, and look how it's forecast overall. It's going to be trending down through up until the at least the beginning of December. That's what it looks like with the forecasting here. All right. Our last, our last oscillation, we went over a Pacific North American pattern. We went over Arctic oscillation. 
Now it's time for the North Atlantic Oscillation. All right. Now, I feel like they, these oscillations are named something for a reason. Like the Pacific North American pattern, did you notice notice how all the like all the significant stuff was focused over the over North America because it's called the Pacific North American pattern. The Arctic oscillation, everything was focused over the Arctic. All right, well the North Atlantic oscillation, it tends to live up to that as well. If you look at the North Atlantic oscillation, most of the significant stuff is over the North Atlantic. But a negative NAO, which is what I'm going to be showing you uh, the next graphic as well, we are projected to head into a negative NAO through the beginning of December. Hope I'm not losing you guys. All right. We tend to see some below average geopotential heights over the pretty much the entire United States, actually. Really, again, the East and the West are both pretty similar, according to this. And we see above average geopotential heights in the Icelandic region, which kind of like sends the cold air back down into the United States. But, or at least the below average geopotential heights, meaning like low pressure could be moving over here more often, but really over the North Atlantic is where it looks most significant. But the, with the NAO, I did find a bonus map, and that is the actual surface temperature anomalies, because of course when I know the actual surface temperature anomalies with a negative NAO, okay? As you can see, the entire United States, according to this, is below average with the most significant cold air found over the northern plains. But still, the entire United States, east, south, northwest, is pretty much below average, all right? And again, over that, over that Icelandic region, it may be including, like, northern Maine as well, so some slightly above average temperatures. And again, looking at the Climate Prediction Center, you can see we could be hanging on to the more of a positive NAO, but then it kind of, like, slopes downward through December, or at least up until December 1st. And again, why has it been so warm in the east and cold in the west? or at least cooler, because we've been in a positive NAO. All right, I'm glad we went over the oscillation, so hopefully you guys get kind of like that upcoming pattern. Now we're going to start getting into the model. So we got our GFS, our Canadian, and our European, plus a bonus mystery model I've added as well. So if you want to find out what that is, definitely stay tuned till the end. But we have the GFS model first. Now this first storm, we're going to talk about a series of storms. Not all models agree with each other. Maybe the GFS doesn't show much. Maybe the gem doesn't. All right, you have to stick to find out. Stick around. So we have the GFS model here. This is more of a minor low pressure system. Again, there is some cold air behind it, as you can see by these blue dotted lines. High to the north is definitely supplying the cold air. All right, but the low strength is 1,013. That pressure is a bit high, which means the low pressure is a bit weak. So basically, the lower when you see a red L, which is a low pressure, the lower that number is, the stronger the, the system or stronger the air mass, I should say. With the H, the higher the number is, the stronger the high pressure is. So I would say with the low pressure with 1,013 millibars, that's not a very strong system. So precipitation overall will be pretty light. And all the snowfall should actually remain north and northwest of the U.S. border, maybe in mountainous areas in New England and, like, for example, Jackman, Maine. I know a spot there. We could see some snow. All right, maybe even on the back side. As the low starts to deepen a little bit, it starts to draw a little bit more moisture. We see the high continue to, to supply the cold air. I do think the snow could get a bit heavier, all right, but I don't think much is going to fall in the northeast with this one, again, except for those higher elevations. All right, and maybe behind it, for example, like northern Maine behind the system, as it, again, starts to deepen, all right, the cold air deepens behind it, we could see something out of that. But that's not a very major snowmaker unless you live in northern New England. All right, but something could, you know, we, we could see like a little bit of a trickery system here, right? We got our our typical fall-looking system. We got some snow on the front side, for example, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, into Michigan, and then a kind of like like a snow to rain kind of event, all right? But there's some cold air on the back side of this. You can already see the pressure down the 997, which is something because that's a pretty strong system. All right, but this one doesn't have too much cold air either, all right? Um, and why is that? Because um, there is a high back to the west, but there's also a high to the east that's also throwing in some warm air as well. All right, Not to mention, the low that's coming across the country is also throwing in warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. So this one's going to be a bit more of a rainmaker. Again, snow will probably be limited to extreme northern New England, if at all. All right, And this one actually weakens as it moves east. The other one is strengthened. This one actually weakens as it moves east. Falls apart, nothing more than some rain showers. But again, these are very minor snowmakers, but it's something, okay? It's it's November. I mean, we should be seeing snow at this point. I definitely agree with that. But then something a little bit more interesting happens. And again, GFS model, all right, I'll just say a GFS model doesn't show too many systems, but other models might say otherwise. But look at the low. 
that we see forming. Now I'm going to pretty much, I don't want to go out too far, but I do actually want to get a bit of a long range outlook as well because we looked at those, um, those oscillations earlier. You can see a low coming from the southeast. All right, kind of like we see some moisture forming. And there's the low. It starts to deepen, all right? But notice where all the moisture is. There is not, there is, there is cold air. Do not get me wrong. I see a lot of cold air coming in on the back side, but the cold air is not really meeting up with the moisture per se. So not too much snow could come out of this, but definitely on the back side, as this really deepens, we start to see more cold air. All right, we see the back side of the low, we see more cold air come in and where that, those blue lines and the precipitation, they kind of overlap and that's where you get the snow on the back side uh, to be more specific lake effect snow for places like the Northeast. All right, like Michigan, well, that's just the Midwest, but Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, through New York, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario will definitely, the lakes will be cranking. All right, then we have something a little low, very weak low that, that dives down from the North. Again, it's, it's kind of like entrapped in some cold air. So th that low, if that does happen to form, this is like December 1st in the evening. Uh, we could see a bit of snow out of that. Um, but overall, nothing too major. There's another low coming from the southeast, and then that's the end with the GFS model. And we end on December 8th with some lake effect snow. So overall, GFS, not very, it's, they're not really hinting at anything, at least through the first week of December. Um, and again, once, as we move into those oscillations, like I told you about, this may not start happening until the first week of December. We might start to see something happen through the east in terms of some cold and snow. But look at the dynamics with some of these systems. All right, some of these systems will draw on a lot of energy. All right, so keep that in mind as well. All right, GFS, snowfall totals. All right, overall, very minor to moderate snowfall totals for a lot of places. Highest, like, we're talking about feet of snow. We're talking about either in the Rockies or, like, well outside the U.S., like, up in the Icelandic region. Probably you could see your, you know, your, you know, your typical one, the four, five, six feet of snow. Yeah, nothing too much for them. I'm sure they're probably used to that. All right, but over the lakes, all right, uh, through December, or actually, no, I thought I was, I thought I was out further. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so now if we look at the next 16 days, sorry, I thought I thought I was out there already, but here's 16 days, and for northern New England, you see those pinks. Yes, we can see that's about six to 10 inches uh, overall, though through the northern plains, uh, through the extreme northern, like the upper Midwest, maybe like one to four inches with some sp uh, spotty areas higher. But again, that's combined over multiple systems. And actually, GFS is saying stuff for the Appalachian Mountains as well. So uh, very pretty out there in Western North Carolina with, with the Appalachian Mountains and the Smoky Mountains. It's beautiful out there. All right, but when we look, this area always shocks me because if you look top left of your screen, that's like the island, almost like near the island chain of Alaska. Yeah, they always see like hundreds and hundreds of inches of snow in like a couple weeks. That, that's just always astonishing. That's just astonishing, to be honest with you. That's a lot of snow. I kind of wish I could have all that. All right, but again, over the Northwest, that's pretty much where most of your snow is going to be this time of year. Um, really, snow should start to be fall a bit farther south, and one model does actually hint at that. All right, so without further ado, let's move on to the Canadian model. All right, now again, with, um, pretty much like the GFS, they do say something similar a week low moving through the northeast. It will deepen a little bit, but still not really strong enough to produce any significant snow. Then they're, they're a bit more interesting with the second system. I got to say the timing with these two models is a bit more on point, which I like. Again, you have your high to the west and a high to the east. Now the high to the east will definitely be giving some, some warm air, but the high to the west will also be giving some cold air. Now, as long as the cold air is in place, there could be as much warm air as it wants to be. The cold air just has to be in place first. Then the warm air comes in and there's the snow. If the warm air is already in place and the cold air comes in, then that's obviously the opposite. All right, so there you go. There's the mix of snow and rain. All right, for the... Now, I don't see any ice or sleep, but there is definitely a mix of blue and green, some snow and rain. All right. Obviously, when they get this far out, they're not going to pinpoint which areas get ice yet. They just want to focus on who gets snow and who gets rain. All right, because it's a bit far out. All right, we're about five days out so far. But again... Pretty much rain uh, for the East Coast. All right, but there, there definitely is hope, as I mentioned with the oscillations earlier. But, ooh, look at this. All right. All right, so this is trying to get some people's attention a little bit. All right, we got some snow in the Southern Plains. This is like Saturday afternoon-ish. All right, and then now we actually got a good winter system in the making. All right, I think we just had winter storm constants not too long ago. So I believe we are on the D name winter storm. I, I cannot recall which, what it is. All right, but I think D name winter storm is next. And yeah, and there's the low. It's deepening a lot. And on the northwest side, 
where the cold air, you can see the cold air is intruding on the back side because of that high off to the west. So if that cold air can come in and overlap that precipitation, yes, we can see some snow uh, breaking out over the northern plains and midwest. But look at that. Doesn't that just astonish you? All right, the low actually wraps up and moves over, almost moves back this way. So now the low center is situated here. All right, now when it makes that that curl kind of movement, all right, that is that is very important because what that does is keeps the east warm. We see a big cold front, maybe some severe weather, but it also sends. Look at this cold air all the way down into the southeast U.S. All right, and if you look very closely, let me actually I'll actually go to the southeast. If you look closely, you can actually see some snow flurries getting down into Georgia, into Mississippi, and Alabama. All right, you can actually see if you look closely. You can see some snow flurries trying to break out. All right, very, very spotty and kind of like irrelevant, but definitely something to watch out for. And yes, these storms will be packing a lot of energy with them. All right, if you look, let's say the next, let's go out maybe like nine or 10 days or so. Look, look how wound up that low gets. It kind of just sits there and it gets all wound up. And that really, when the cold air already in place, that takes that cold air and it just shoves it down to the southeast. And the way the... Mountains are shaped, all right, with the with the Appalachian Mountains and the Smoky Mountains. Some snow could break out there as well. Now, the snow totals for the gem model actually surprised me. They actually do call for not just flurries, but maybe upwards of a half an inch, one inch of snow for the southeast. I mean, hey, it's something, right? Right? But most of the snow is upwards of like 6 to 12, maybe closer to actually a couple feet in like the UP of Michigan, but more so 6 to 12 inches in the northern U.S., but still, it's a lot of snow, all right? The European model, all right, it's pretty, again, showing the same thing with the first system, second system, kind of like the GFS as well, all right? And then they do have, like, the gem model, something trying to break out with that third system. Start to add up some sleet, maybe some snow, and then it gets a bit more wound up. The pressure drops, the high off to the west strengthens, more cold air gets forced in, and we could see some snow break out over the northern United States, it's always, it's so interesting to see how these storms work. And look at this, just like the gem model, the low gets wound up and some colder gets pushed in, but this has some snow flurries farther north, nothing down in the southeast because of that high pressure down there. So again, storms are pretty energetic. All right, I'm pretty sure you guys get the gist of that at this point. If the low becomes wound up like this, we get a, like a, a front to develop so that the east gets some severe weather, maybe some cold air and some snow behind it. All right, and then we have some snow through the next 10 days. Um, more to the tune of like six to ten, but they're actually calling for the Europeans call for like thirty inches plus for northern, like lower Michigan, but for the northern part of lower Michigan, not the UP. All right, but they do call for some snow pretty far south, as far south as Kentucky, as far south as Tennessee. Inch or two is certainly possible. And our bonus model, hopefully, I, actually, I want you guys to comment the name of this model. Which the name of the model is UKMET. I want you to. Put that model in the comments below if you made it to this point. So hopefully, so I know that you guys saw this model. I don't know if you guys heard of this. It's on Pivotal Weather. It's relatively new, uh, the UK MET model. All right, it's, re it's relatively new on this website, I should say. All right, but it, it's been around for a bit. And they go out about six days or so. Um, they, do, they don't have a precipitation map. Otherwise, I would show you like they're right in the snow. But they do have a snowfall total map. And they call for a few inches of snow through northern New England. Uh, we got a couple inches or a few inches for like the for Michigan, for Wisconsin, for Minnesota, and then of course you got your snow in the Rockies. Very, very reasonable model. I think this is certainly how it could play out. And this only goes through November twenty eighth. All right, the other models go out like ten days to a couple weeks. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, comment UKMET in the comments if you did reach, if you did make it to this model, to this mystery model. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Dweller Dude. Signing off till next time, and I will catch you guys in the next video.